Okay, we will continue on the different sequencing rules and we have now seen this problem with five different jobs given processing time, given due date and when we use the first come first served strategy we have found the completion time uh, the sum of the completion time also called the, the sum of the, the flow times and the tardiness which is the number of days delayed and we have found values for these um, this particular sequence with four different measurements here one is the mean flow time the average of the sum of the flow times another one is the average tardiness the average of the number of days delayed divi uh, divided of all the jobs of course uh, so the number of tardy jobs which is three in this case and maximum tardiness the number of days the job which is most delayed which is 42 in this case so let's now try another sequence we will rather than use the first come first served use the shortest processing time and see how will this affect this schedule uh, and then just look at the processing time here of course the job number four only one day so th that will be the first one then job number five only two days job number one 11 days job number two 29 days and job number three 31 days and then we will have the completion time or the flow time which will be one for job number four job number five will be finished after three days it has to wait one day and then it takes two days by itself job number one will take 11 more days means 14 job number two 29 more days 43 and job number 31 job number three uh, which takes 31 days will then be finished by 74 and of course since we have only one machine the the, uh, the make span is 74 and the job which is scheduled at last will always be finished by day 74 and now let's sum the numbers in this column we get 135 and 135 divided by 5 will then be 27 so the mean flow time in this case will be 27 uh, look at the tardiness we can see that uh, well of course job number one job number uh, job number four sorry job number five and job number one it's finished far before the due date so that's not the problem job number two is finished by day 43 should be finished by day 45 so this is also in time but job number three is now finished at day 74 but has a due date of 31 so this is 43 days delayed so here we have actually the sum of the tardiness is 43 we have only one job delayed but this is then very much delayed 43 days delayed so the average tardiness will here be 43 divided by 5 which is 8.6 and the number of tardy jobs is 1 and the maximum tardiness will now be 43 and what we can say here is that uh, well this is probably a much better criteria uh, much be much better sequence but by most of the criteria better than f uh, the FCFS strategy uh, it has a lower mean flow time it has a lower average tardiness it has uh, less 
hardy jobs, but if this is a very important job, job number three, then this is very delayed, so the max tardiness, however, is higher in this case than if you were using the first come, first served strategy. What is also important to know, this strategy, shortest processing time, is the optimal strategy if minimizing the flow time or the mean flow time is the main objective. If we should finish as many jobs as possible, as soon as possible, this is the best strategy. This will always give uh, the best result for the mean flow time. Because we should finish the small jobs first, get them out of the system, and then we have to wait with the larger jobs. Of course, some situation, this should be the preferred objective, but in some other situation, this is not necessarily the best one. So now, let's rather look at the third strategy here, the EDD, the earliest due date. Jobs are now to be sequenced according to the due dates. Look at this column and sequence one by comparing the, the, the due dates of the different jobs. Well, earliest due date, look here, the first job will then be job number three. Then we have job number five, job number four, job number two, and job number one at last. <laughs> and let's again write this, job number one which has a due date of 61. And if we now look at the completion time, we know that job number three will take 31 days. Job number five will take two more days. Job number four will take one more day. Job number two, 29 more days finished by day 63, and at last, job number one, which will take 11 days, and is finished at day 74. And if we now sum all these numbers, we will get a total of 235, which is 100 more than with the, the, the SPT strategy. So here we can see that the completion time, or the flow time, will be much higher in total when we use the earliest due date strategy. The average flow time, or the mean flow time, 235 divided by five, will be a total of 47. Looking at the tardiness, we can see that job number three will be finished in time. Here, well, it is the only way this job will be finished in time is that it is uh, scheduled at first because the process time is meets exactly the due date. So the tardiness for this jo job will be zero. Job number five, however, should be finished by day 32, but it will be one day late. Job number four, 34 compared to 33, so this is also one day late. Job number two, Finished by day 63, should be finished by 45, it is 18. And at last, job number one will be 13 days late. And here, the tardiness, one plus one plus 18 plus 13, will be 33. And the average tardiness, 33, divided by five, will be 6.6. .6. Now the number of tardy jobs will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the maximum tardiness is 18. And if we now remember the, the, the similar numbers on the SPT strategy, we uh, 
remember that, well, the mean flow time was 27, which is much smaller on the SPT strategy. So if the main objective is to finish the jobs as soon as possible, we should prefer SPT before EDD. The average tardiness, however, 6.6. And we remember from SPT, it was 8.6. So here, this, looking at the average tardiness, this is a better strategy. The number of tardy jobs, however, four jobs delayed compared to one. And the maximum tardiness here is 18. And we remember on the SPT strategy, the maximum tardiness was 43. So here, in particular for this objective, the EDD strategy is to prefer. And this objective to minimize the maximum tardiness will also be the, the objective where this strategy is the uh, optimal strategy. Uh, you will always get the optimal strategy if the main objective is to minimize the maximum delay by using the earliest due date. But we also saw that the average tardiness is better than the SPT strategy, but the number of tardy jobs is much higher. It is now four jobs, which is well, slightly delayed, compared to one job, which was very much delayed with the SPT strategy. Uh, well, these uh, strategies here are, should be quite easy. FCFS, just use the given sequence, one, two, three, four, five. SPT, sort according to the processing time. EDD, sort according to the due date. Let's now look at the fourth strategy here, the critical ratio, where we should compute the ratio for processing time of the job and the remaining time until the due date and schedule the job with the largest CR value next. Uh, this is actually opposite what the example in the textbook. Uh, of course, it depends on whether you are dividing the processing time to the due date or the opposite. So um, either you should uh, schedule the job with the largest CR or the smallest CR, uh, dependent on what, what you are dividing to, to what here. But the, the principle will, will still be, uh, be the same. You should sort, and the, uh, or you should sort and, and then choose the, either the highest or the, or the lowest value as the next job. So let's now look at the same example with this strategy. Then we need some more space. Um, yeah, let's start here, maybe, so we can say that uh, we now will find the critical ratio of all these jobs, five jobs. And now the critical ratio for job number one will be the due date divided by the processing time. I think that is the way they do it in the... Uh, in the textbook, but this uh, comment actually indicates that they should do it the opposite. But here we define the critical ratio uh, as 61 divided by 11, the due date divided by the processing time. So 61 divided by 11 is 5.55. For job number two, it will be 45 divided by 29, which is 1.55. For job number three, it should be pretty easy, 31 divided by 31 is one. Job number four, 33 divided by one. Well, of course, this is not very critical. And job number five, 32 divided by 2, which is 16. So when we divide this way, due date divided by processing time, we should choose the smallest. And the smallest of these numbers are, of course, this one, which indicates that when the critical ratio strategy is used, 
we should have job number three first because this is the most critical job and we can also see very easy that 31 of processing time and a due date of 31 it needs to be finished at first uh, to be processed at first uh, if we should meet the due, due date uh, okay let's now continue to step number two and then we need to come well we need to uh, start from the actual time when this job is finished so now the t value will be equal to 31 uh, so what we actually should also include here is d d minus t and uh, of course for the first job the t was zero but now the t will be equal to 31 so this was step number one we go to step number two and we find that the due date here is 61 minus 31 which is 30 divided by 11 61 minus 31 30 divided by 11 which should be 2.73 and again 45 is the uh, due date here we are on day 31 so 45 minus 31 divided by the processing time which is 29 will give us a value of 0 0.48 Uh, this one is already placed so we jump to job number four and now we have the due date of 33 we are on day 31 it means that we have two days divided by the processing time of one which is of course two and at last job number five we are on day 31 we have the due date of 32 32 minus 31 is of course 1 divided by 2 will be 0 0.5 and what we also can see when looking at this number is that the numbers which are lower than 0 they will be delayed before they are finished we, if they now are, are scheduled at this position. So job number two has the smallest number. We should still, this is the most critical job. Value 0 0.48, smallest number, means that we should now schedule job number two at the next position according to the critical ratio here. Like this. Uh, and then start again. Job number two takes 29 days and we had already 31 so that means that we have now come to t equal to 60 and when t is equal to 60 we know that job number one has a due date of 61 t equal to 60 61 minus 60 is 1 divided by the processing time of 11. 1 divided by 11, uh, which should be 0 0.09. Job number 2 are already positioned and also job number 3. Job number 4 will now be have a due date of 33, but we have a t, a current date of 60, means that this will give a negative number. It will be minus 27 divided by 1. Minus 27 divided by 1, of course, minus 27. And at last, job number 5. Uh, we are on time 60. This should be finished by time six, uh, 32, means that we uh, 32 minus 60 will be minus 28 divided by the processing time of 2 means that this 
will have a value of minus 40. So here we can see that we have already two negative numbers, minus 27 and minus 14. They are delayed. We can choose the lowest one, minus 27 also. It is possible there are sometimes with this rule, you should choose the lowest processing time to finish the already delayed jobs. Uh, this is, uh, well, of course, there are no specific rules on this because the jobs are already delayed, but, but you should uh, either choose the lowest number, which now is minus 27, or eventually the lowest processing time. In this case, it will be the same job. So job number four will be next. And of course, we also can choose job number five, which also already is delayed by minus 14. And then we have only one job left, which is job number one. So this will now be the sequence when using the critical ratio strategy. Uh, and of course, you can have, if you have many jobs, you might have lots of, of different uh, columns here by calculating the critical ratio and choosing one job at a time. But now let's look at the uh, different variables here for the critical ratio strategy. First, find the flow time or the completion time, which is 31 for job number 3, 60 for job number 2, and we remember these are the same numbers as we found here. Then job number 4, one more day, job number 5, two days, and job number 1, 11 more days. This gives us a to a total of 289 for the sum of the flow time. And we can look at the at the variables or, or the, the measurements. So we have the mean flow time, which now is 289 divided by 5 should be 57.8. Uh, the average tardiness, well, then we have to find the tardiness first. Tardiness, job number one is not delayed. Job number two will be delayed. Finished here at time 60, should be finished by 45. So this is 15 days delayed. Job number 4, 61 compared to 33 is 28. Job number 5, 63 uh, compared to 32 will be 31. And job number 1, 74 compared to 61 uh, will be 13 days delayed. This gives a total, a sum of 87. Dividing 87 by 5 jobs we will get an average tardiness of 17.4. <coughs> and the number of tardy jobs, okay, one, two, three, four, four jobs are delayed. And at last the maximum tardiness in this case will be 31. So here we can see that this strategy is not optimal for any objective. It is better for some objectives than the SPT strategy. It is better for other objectives than the EDD strategy. And it's some kind of compromise between these two ways of, of scheduling. It com it's a compromise between the shortest processing time, which will minimize the mean flow time, and the earliest due date, which will minimize the maximum tardiness. <coughs> so this is the critical ratio, another way uh, to find a schedule where you don't exactly make one particular priority, but you try to balance between different priorities. Now before we finish today. I think we also will find time for looking at Morse algorithm. 
which is more like an algorithm. We need to, well, also like we did with the critical ratio, find, choose one job at a time. Uh, this algorithm will be the best possible algorithm with, if this is the maximum or, or the optimal, the priority we want to do, minimizing the number of tardy jobs. It will find a sequence that will have the least number of tardy jobs as possible. Uh, there might be different sequences which is, uh, have the same number, but th there is no, uh, no sequences by using more algorithms. There, th there will be no se sequences that will be give a better uh, result on this particular objective by minimizing the number of tardy jobs. And then, I think I have a sheet here. So this is the particular algorithm. First, sequence the jobs according to the earliest due date. <coughs> uh, then, look at the sequence with the earliest due date and find the first tardy job, the first job which is delayed. And if there is no jobs, we could just jump to step number four. But if the sequence con uh, contains at least one tardy job, we should consider the jobs up to that job in the sequence and then reject the job with the largest processing time among these jobs. Then go back to two, uh, look at the sequence without the reje rejected job, and then continue until we have a sequence of jobs which is not delayed. And then we should append the rejected jobs to the current sequence, and then it can be done in any order because they are delayed anyway. Or you could have another second objective which is the first objective will then be to minimize the number of tardy jobs and you can have a second objective which is minimizing the maximum uh, time or mean flow time using the SPT or, or the earliest uh, due date uh, sequence. <coughs> so let's now look at this job and uh, let's first start with job with the earliest uh, due date uh, strategy, where we remember we're sorting here, so then it was job three, five, four, two, and one. Okay, with this strategy, we had the flow time as 31 and uh, job number five, two more days, which is 33. And we can see now that I'm <coughs> among these two jobs, well, 31 is in time, but 33 is delayed. Job number five is one day delayed. And then, According to step three here, we should consider the jobs up to job number i, which now will be three and five, and reject the largest job among these two. Not the job which is delayed, but the largest of the two jobs in the sequence so far. And of course, the largest job, job is this one. 31 is much larger than two. So we should now reject job number three, and then continue with the remaining uh, sequence here. So now looking at job number five, I should just say Morse algorithm here, because we now will start putting up the sequence with job number five, which takes two days. Job number four will take one more day. Job number two will take 29 more days, finished by 32. 
and job number one, 11 days, finished by 43. And looking at the tardiness here, we can see that none of these jobs are delayed. And that's uh, and then we can just jump over step three and jump to job step number four and append the rejected jobs to the current sequence in any order. Now we have only one rejected job, which is job number three, which takes Five, four, two, one, eleven should be here, should be forty three, of course. And job number three will be finished by day seventy four, and then this job will be uh, a total of forty three days delayed. Uh, and we can again try to look at the different measurements if we now sum the flow times together, we will get a total of uh, 154. We will get a total number of the tardiness, which is 43. And then the mean flow time will be 154 divided by 5, which is 30.8. We have the average tardiness, which is 43 divided by 5, which is 8.6. And number of tardy jobs is 1. And the max tardiness is 43. And this sequence, well, uh, it doesn't, on, on this example, it doesn't really show uh, because uh, show much because this uh, will be the same measurement as we had, for example, with the, with the SPT strategy. But this objective here, the number of tardy jobs, will always be at the lowest level by using the strategy of Morse algorithm. Uh, so when this is the main job, we should minimize the number of jobs delayed, use Morse algorithm. Uh, I have one more example, and I have 10 minutes, so I think I can finalize it. Uh, so, which probably, hopefully will uh, show this algorithm better than the previous example. Uh, so here, assume that we have now have six jobs, uh, and the six jobs can be shown in, uh, uh, we can just go directly to the earliest due date schedule, because this is the first step of Morse algorithm. So when we have the earliest due date schedule, we will have the sequence of the jobs as job number two, three, one, five, four, and six. And we have a processing time, which is uh, three, four, ten, ten, eight, and six. And we have the due date, which is now the given sequence, which is sorted after due date, which was six, 9, 15, 20, 23, and 30, like this. So now let's look at this sequence and we can find that with this sequence here the completion time will be, well, we can make some space here for the Morse algorithm sequence. Uh, well, we will have the completion time of three, 
for job number two, the first one. And then the next job, job number three, will be finished by day seven. And then job number one will take 10 more days. Job number five, even 10 more days. Job number four will take eight days, a total of 35. And job number six will take six more days, a total of 41. Well, looking at this schedule, we can look at the tardiness. Three, seven. These are finished before the due date, but job number one is now finished by day 17. It should be finished by day 15. <coughs> then this will be delayed. And <coughs> as we can see in step three, consider the jobs up to I, which is the first tardy job, and then reject the job with the largest processing time. So we now have to compare job number two, number three, and number one and choose the job with the largest processing time, which is job number one. So, with this um, sequence now, we will still start with job number two, then job number three. We should reject job number one, which means that the next job in schedule will be job number five, Job number five will take 10 days. We are on day number seven, means that we are finished by day 17. And day 17 is before day number 20. <coughs> so here, we are still in time, zero. Uh, next job will then be job number four. Job number four takes eight days. Eight plus 17 will be 25. And then we can see again, we have a problem because this job, 25, is finished after the due date. So now again, we have to jump to step number three, consider the jobs up to job number I, reject the job with the largest processing time means we should compare job number two, number three, number five, and number four, look at the processing time, and reject the largest job. The job which is causing the delay. And this, in this case, this will be job number five. Not job number four, which is the one which is delayed, but job number five, which is the one with the largest processing time. And then we have a new schedule, two, three. We have rejected one and we have rejected five. We continue with four and six. Job number four takes eight days. Start on date se seven, finished by day 15. Is not delayed. And job number six takes six days. Starts on 15, finished by day 21. And is not delayed. So now we have a schedule here of four jobs, which all are in time. And then step number four, append the rejected jobs to the current sequence in any order because they are delayed anyway. So here we can jo uh, append job one and five at the end of the sequence. Job number one takes 10 days. Job number five takes also 10 days. So 31 and 41. 31 compared to 15 will be 16 days uh, late. And 41 compared to 20 will be 21 days late. And we can now, with this sequence, we can find the relevant measurements. We can find the average flow time, the average tardiness. We can easily count the number of tardy jobs. And of course, also easily find the maximum delay. But the number of tardy jobs, in this case two, is the lowest possible in this, uh, among these six jobs. It's not possible to find another sequence with only one tardy job. 
There could be other sequences with two tardy jobs, but we know that this particular sequence will have the minimum number of tardy jobs, the minimum number of jobs that are delayed. So this is the objective where Moore's algorithm will give you the best possible uh, or the, the optimal solution. Uh, so now we are not entirely finished with chapter 8, but it's not much left because we now have to wait until next week to finalize the last part of the curriculum, which is Lawler's algorithm, where still you will minimize the maximum flow time, but now you also need to consider some precedence constraints, which means that some jobs need to be finished before the others. And of course, you know about the assignment number three, uh, delivery time by tomorrow morning. Uh, and next week, I will, uh, of course, present the last part of the curriculum. And then I will also present the solution for assignment number three.